uh, a really good way to see if it's uh, see if it's a good order of operations or if it, if it's clear and concise is um, have one of your coaches run through it and you just listen to the class don't watch it so literally close your eyes listen to the coach run through it and if you can't visualize what's supposed to happen or where you're supposed to be throughout the movement it's not the way it should be Hi right, guys, welcome back to Jerk Block Talk. I'm Jason Fernandez, we're here at CrossFit Rife. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about um, kind of command sequence when you're teaching a movement, whether it's complex or simple. Um, this is uh, something that I've kind of messed up frequently uh, when I was a, a newer coach and even sometimes uh, when I teach movements now. Uh, but it's very, very common in people who are just starting to learn progressions uh, or teach complex movements. And when I talk about when I say command sequence, <clears throat> Um, here's a dead giveaway if you're being clear about the sequence of events that's supposed to happen when you, when you uh, are teaching a movement. If everybody looks like they're in sync when you say something, things are going well. If five people are doing one thing, two people are doing something else, and three people look like they have no idea what's going on, at some point you have not clearly communicated or you've not been consistent with your command and the sequence of those commands, okay? So for instance, um, today, uh, if you move this way, move over this way, Trey. Um, we were teaching uh, a more complex movement and uh, it was a cluster complex. So it's a hang cluster plus a thruster uh, for nine, six, three, and one reps. Um, so when you're teaching that movement, you have to teach the thruster, then you have to teach it from the hang. If you're gonna teach the full push press, again, there's a lot of different pieces that have to happen there. Um, so I have a lot of people doing complex bar movements, right? So if I'm gonna teach that movement, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show them the full movement, and the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell them the sequence of commands, right? So I'm gonna say, hey guys, for the thruster, first thing we're gonna cover is the front squat, and I'll say squat and stand, okay? Or you just say the commands will be squat and stand, it'll look like this, squat and stand. And then what I want you to think about doing is trying to get what you're going to tell them in at least three times before you tell them. So be like, all right guys, the two commands will be squat and stand. It'll look like this, boom. Then you demo the, the verbal and the actual movement. Put the PVC pipe down, make sure everybody's set, and then say it one more time. Be like, all right guys, the commands will be squat and stand, okay? Another version of that um, is when you're doing either snatch or hang clean movements. So like in today's workout, when we were going over the cluster, um, we were gonna teach the movement from the top of the knee for the hang clean. So for today, the stipulations on the hang, the hang cluster were just anything above the knee. Um, there's some ways you can mess that up. If you just say ready, go, or and go, um, there's not gonna be a lot of people on the same sequence, <clears throat> meaning this. I wanna be very clear and I wanna give people time to react to the movement that I'm gonna do. Uh, so if I'm gonna have them start top of the knee, the commands would look like this. Top of the knee, ready, go, and reset. So now I'm giving people time to get the auditory um, feedback from me and then to react to it. So I'll say top of the knee, ready, ready, go, and reset, okay? So um, a lot of times I'll hear uh, coaches when they want that kind of preface to the command of go or whatever it's gonna be and they'll say and go, it sounds really dumb, but the difference between a one syllable word and a two syllable word to give the athletes that cue that like, hey, the, the go command is coming makes a big difference. So if you say ready, that is a two syllable word. They now know, hey, the go command is coming next. I need to be ready to go. Where if you just say and go, half of the group is going to hear that and half of them are not. So some of you might think that's really, really dumb but having done this a thousand times, I'm gonna tell you that is an easier way to do it and a much, much easier way to get everybody in sync. So when you're teaching complex movements, what I want you to do is I want you to think about the sequence of the commands that you're giving for that progression 
Does it make sense? And are you giving the athletes time to get to the positions that you want in order to do the progression correctly or the pieces of the movement correctly. Sometimes people will teach these movements really, really fast and half the group's doing the full movement, half of them's doing uh, power movements and nobody's on the same page. And this is, makes it really, really confusing. Um, going back to a lot of those scenarios when you may have newer people in the class, if this stuff is not dialed in and super smooth and the sequence is correct and you're giving people time to move, those new people are gonna see eight different things happening in the class that's gonna be problematic because they're not gonna know what's going on, okay? Um, and the other thing is, what'll happen is, especially for those new people, when you give that ready command, if the new person's in the class and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing, when you say ready or top of the knee, they're gonna watch everybody go top of the knee, you're gonna say ready, you're gonna say go, most of the people that know what's going on are gonna do that movement. That person who doesn't really, or who's new to the class is gonna watch them do it and they'll be like, oh, okay, boom and they'll only be a half a second behind or so like that. So um, think about the sequence of commands that you get, try to clean it up. Uh, a really good way to see if it's, uh, see if it's a good order of operations or if, it, if it's clear and concise is um, have one of your coaches run through it and you just listen to the class, don't watch it. So literally close your eyes, listen to the coach run through it and if you can't visualize what's supposed to happen or where you're supposed to be throughout the movement it's not the way it should be right somebody should be able to literally walk you through that if you were blind literally so that you would know exactly what was supposed to happen so try that out guys see what the command sequence is that you use and see if the order that you use those words uh, is clear and again tell tell sign is everybody in sync or are they not? If they're not, it's a dead giveaway that you need to correct those sequences. So um, I thought that was uh, important and we covered it with a couple of our coaches here recently. So um, cool. Uh, thanks a lot guys. If you like this content, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks.